One of the key questions, I believe, for the 21st century will be this. Will smarter computers make for smarter leaders? Earlier this year was uh, the South by Southwest Festival. And as you can imagine, it was an annual congregation of some of the world's nerdiest and geekiest people. A number of young geeky men were on an app that I'm sure that none of you have heard of. It's called Tinder. Anyway, these guys should have been suspicious because out of the blue, it seemed like this beautiful girl wanted to speak to them. Now, any nerd should be suspicious about a beautiful girl wanting to speak to them. <laughs> but I guess optimism blooms eternal. So they started chatting to this girl and you can see the conversation between this young guy called Brock. And so he's talking to uh, Eva and she starts a cup of conversation. It seems to be going very well. She's asking some very interesting and very personal questions like, has he ever been in love? Uh, what makes you human? And then, of course, she, Brock gets very excited when she, he asks, not only are you attracted to me, but would you like to meet up? So Brock's getting almost beside himself at this point. Uh, and then finally she says, well, listen, before we meet up, why don't you just check out my Instagram profile? So, he, you know, he thinks this is quite reasonable. But the minute he does, Brock and the hearts of hundreds of other nerds across Austin simultaneously break. Why? Because Ava is not human. Ava was a piece of artificial intelligence bot software used to promote the movie Ex Machina. Think about what this means. We've reached a level of technological sophistication that a simple promotional chat bot can actually, for all intents and purposes, pass the famous Turing test, the ability of a machine to trick a human being into thinking it was a person. I bring this up because I think that we're having this incredible and interesting debate at the moment about whether robots are gonna come and take all of our jobs. I think this is an incredible red herring. Because if anything, I think the rise of machine intelligence begs a much bigger question. And that is, in the 21st century, what does human intelligence look like? <laughs> you see, I think at the moment, we're trying to understand what in the future will a great leader be able to do in a world where machines are, for all intents and purposes, smarter, quicker, and better than us. Many of you may know this particular famous day in history. It was the day that Garry Kasparov had the worst day of his life. He lost to IBM's Big Blue. But not many people know what happened next. You see, Kasparov thought, well, maybe I can go for a rematch. But he knew that the writing was on the wall. The days of humans beating machines at chess were well and truly over. So what he did is he went on to create freestyle chess. And in its first tournament, there was about 48 teams that met together, he said, you can use any combination of human beings and machines to play. There was very open rules. There were two types of players. There were the headless teams, which were really just military grade supercomputers, telling the humans what to do. And then there were the centaur teams, where human beings and machines collaborated. Now, it became pretty clear in the finals that the top four teams would all be centaurs. But there was this mystery team called Zac S, and everyone thought maybe this was uh, Garry Kasparov secretly playing. Because all the other players were military-grade supercomputers and chess masters. Zac S went on to win. One of the players was a soccer coach. The other one was a database administrator. They were using ordinary computers. In fact, one of them borrowed his dad's computer because he didn't have one. But what did they do that was better than everybody else? Well, they knew how to collaborate. They knew which computer to listen to when, and they knew how to use it and when to listen to their own judgment. In some ways, it prefigured, I think, really the future of 21st century leadership in the context of a data-driven, algorithmic organization of the future. It isn't about the machines taking away from us. It's about understanding how we manage and collaborate with them. You see, the organization of the future is really, in almost every respect, defined by data. Data will change the way we make things. I mean, do you realize that Harley Davidson today builds 1,700 bike variations on a single line, shipping an entirely customized bike every 90 seconds? For the manufacturer of the future, every order is a special order. There's no more mass production of the same item. 
Data is also changing the, the way that companies create value. So John Deere, for example, doesn't just sell harvesters or uh, uh, tractors anymore. In some sense, they don't sell things at all. They sell data about things. With predictive analytics, their engineers can actually arrive on a farm the day before the harvester breaks because their models have predicted that this would happen. But of course, data also creates new challenges for leaders. You've all been reading about the difficulties Volkswagen have been having lately. In just the last few days, their value has dropped by a third, and of course their CEO and many of their leaders have been forced to resign. But think about it. Look at the complexity of the software that now governs all cars, and in fact anything that a company today makes. Every company today is a data-driven company. And yet how many of your executives and leaders are truly across every facet of that business in the complexity. Do you think the CEO of Volkswagen could say, look, I didn't know about it? The truth is anything that happens with data is on the watch of today's leaders. You cannot claim ignorance. But how many of your leaders do you think would be able to tell the difference between a performance patch and a defeat device? And you start to realize the challenge of a world in which being a leader is not easy when most of your resources are not even human. And in fact, how do you maintain your humanity as a people-centered leader when every aspect of your performance will be measured, monitored, and benchmarked by unfeeling, unemotional machine intelligences?